fact, I would like to take a moment to issue a friendly challenge to other hobbyists out there. What do you think you can come up with using only components from a single item? What sort of model or terrain would you make? Hello, Wasteland! Yes, and welcome to today's episode, where we are taking on a challenge from the Scratch Bashing channel. Yes, so as some of you may or may not know, Scratch Bashing is an up-and-coming YouTube channel, quite like myself, specialising in making vehicles and terrain from literal garbage, taking trash, taking recyclable materials like plastics and cardboard, taking bits of old broken toys, you name it. Brian over at Scratch Bashing, he will turn it into a wonderful creation. And I, I had to reach out to this guy because it really touches on something that I think a lot of us go through when we start getting into this hobby, be it for, you know, Mad Max toy cars or 40k or whatever tabletop system. There's that point of very early on where you don't have the money for the terrain and the vehicles that you want so you just sort of cobble things together with what you have now as many of you may know i'm a huge proponent of trash bashing if you have a look at the trash bash international facebook group you will see for many years ago i posted up some of my builds there but uh, just to help summarize if none of you guys know what the hell i'm on about it's about taking everyday household items that you might normally throw away, like milk bottle tops and Coca-Cola bottles and old tin cans and cardboard and lollipop sticks, and it's about gluing it all together and turning it into something that you can use in your games, you can use it as terrain, you can use it for dioramas, you could use it for anything which may sound very similar to what I've been doing with my terrain videos and some of my previous challenge videos, but the challenge here is that you can't use any of your normal bits. You can't use any of your, your good bits that you have for like your Gaslands cars or from 40k. It all has to be made from trash. Which brings us to today's challenge. So, Brian has put out the challenge across the internet to all would-be scratch builders. And that is to make a single vehicle using a single item. So, any extra little details, any extra little bits, have to come from that original item. In mine, I'm planning on using this computer mouse. So, <laughs> let's jump straight into this. So this is an old wired mouse that I've long since cut the wire off of. Um, I exclusively use wireless mice now, um, but every, every now and then you get one of these knocking about. And I thought this would be a perfect base to, to work this challenge on, because you've got that great exterior shell, but then you've also got all the little components on the inside. Now, at first, I figured if I removed these little plastic, uh, little, you know, protective pads, I might find the screws. But there's only there's only this one, from what I can see. I mean, I, I peeled off this this larger sticker on the back, figuring there might be two screws. But no, this mouse was so cheap that it only is only held together with one screw, which on the upside makes disassembly a lot easier. So, cracking out the old screwdriver here, let's take this sucker apart. And as I'm starting to work on this, I'm thinking about what kind of vehicle or bit of terrain I can turn this into. Because I think a lot of the time when you start doing this, when you start trash bashing, you start having the seed of an idea before you've really started taking something apart. Like in this case, I'm feeling some kind of Judge Dredd vehicle, like a skimmer or a speeder, or even something like out of Star Wars. Now, as you can see from the inside, there's a lot of really cool interior details on this little teeny tiny circuit board. So the plan is to take this apart and just see what I can use. Like right here, there's a perfect like little rubber wheel like <laughs> if i wanted this thing to have a wheel well there you go and it's little things like that that you'll find when you start taking apart things that otherwise you know normally this would just be chucked out 
but here we go so if we take off the actual clicky components here like there's that whole plastic section at the back that normally just holds it to the mouse there's all sorts of little bits there that could be cut off or changed and modified as well as the new shapes that are now available because we've taken that off now one of the trickier things with this challenge and I think applies to anyone who tries to turn a computer mouse into anything is you don't want it to be immediately readable as just a computer mouse at a distance and it's it's pretty hard it's pretty hard because it's such a recognizable shape and like these days we use computers every single day so we all have that immediate connection with a computer mouse there you go there's some funny little bits in here and and you might you know if you're building along at home you might use that in this project or you might save it for a future one I don't know if I'll end up using it in this one, but you'll just have to watch and find out. Now, I'll admit I'm pretty ignorant when it comes to computer components, so a lot of the stuff I'm tearing off here, I, I've got no idea what it does. I know that some of these are the components that actually make the like clicky sound and make it work, but beyond that, I couldn't tell you what any of this is called, like little diodes and capacitors and whatever funny little interesting detail bits. But here I am trying to figure out how I can turn this into a sci-fi vehicle that doesn't just immediately look like a mouse. And it's got some great like curves to it. This is the whole thing. Like when you're picking that initial object, you know, don't just pick it because it's like, oh, that looks like a toy tank, so I'm just going to turn it into a sci fi tank. Done. Like, no, you, you, you want to take something that's really sort of normal and mundane, you know, like a computer mouse, and then turn it into something completely different and wild. So here I'm just, you know, cutting off the, the little clicky mouse bits. I th I'm sure these have got a technical name, but I don't know what it is, so clicky mouse bits. <laughs> because I've got two of them, they're completely mirrored, so surely we could use these as like wings or something like that. Or even like doors or access panels that have been lifted up so that the occupants can like work on the engine. Now, I, one of my many passions is a video game called Age of Wonders Planetfall, and there's a faction in that game called the Syndicate, and long story short, they have a, a relatively endgame vehicle called, oh, uh, is it the Wraith? I think it's called the Wraith, or the Mirage, something like that. And yeah, I, I, was, I was looking at that and I was thinking, maybe, maybe I could be inspired by that, maybe if I cut up the mouse I could turn it into some kind of almost like futuristic yacht type vehicle like with an open open top section for like a model to stand in but in order to do that we're going to need to cut this sucker in half Now, I can't stress the importance enough of when you're cutting up plastics like this, make sure that it's clamped in place tightly, and also make sure you're using something. Like in this case, I'm using masking tape just to give you a guiding line, because there's no way you could cut these cleanly in half, like perfectly in half, unless you have something to, to look at as you're doing the sawing. Like the amount of times I've tried to saw something in half and gone off at an angle, because I don't have anything there. But straight away, as you can see, just by cutting that in half, by putting the two pieces together, you get a bit of that sort of Aladdin feeling when, uh, you know, the start of the film when Jafar sticks the two parts of the scarab together and it goes, Tsh! locks in place. You get that kind of eureka moment where you're fiddling with something, you go, there you go, that's the direction this project will go in, and that's what happened here. So, so yeah, I, I've already got from this, I can see roughly how this will start to piece together 
it will just be a matter now of making the key modifications and cuts required to get all of these components to play ball and play nicely. So in this case, I've got to cut off those sort of side covers on the base plate of the mouse. Now, one of the, one of the advantages but also a disadvantage to this kind of project is because you're making it up as you go along, there's no right or wrong way to do something. So whenever you encounter a problem, you will like notice little bits that need tweaking and editing. And that was a problem I had here. As I said, you know, even even with like a guiding mark, you will still like make these things not 100% like accurate. So don't be afraid to like get out a smaller, more accurate tool and do the little tweaks needed to make sure that all your components start to line up. So there you go. So that front, the front and rear plates now on this are starting to look a lot better. Now I'm going to use a whole mix of different like materials to attach all these bits together, from super glue to using a bit of masking tape to hold it to the hot glue gun. Honestly, just use whatever you're comfortable with. Like the whole purpose of this challenge is to promote creativity. Like what can you make from a single item without the vast resources of your bits box and materials? So when it comes to glue and like using filler and stuff like that, don't worry about it, just use it. <laughs> so using these two side offcuts, that, I mean, they fit really nicely on top. And if I wanted this to be a closed top vehicle, there you go. But there has to be more challenge to this build. So I'm going to modify these and make it so that you've got that inlaid section for people to stand in. So here I'm going to use these back pieces as a cover for the rear of the vehicle. And I'll use the front pieces. I'll sink them down in the middle and use like bits of offcut to hold those in place to create a bed. Hopefully as the video goes on this all starts to make more sense and it looks less like just a lot of scrappy bits of plastic glued together. Okay, so the way I, I went about trying to make the little seating area is I knew on the inside there was currently no supports, no structure to hold this this new sort of bed in place. So I put an off-cut bit of plastic at the back as like a headboard or rest or whatever you want to call it. But that then gave me at least something that I could attach the bed to, even if it's only temporarily, just while I put in all of the little supports around it. This is why when you're working on a project like this, keep all the little off-cut bits of plastic that you remove, because at the time you might think, ah, it's worthless, you know, this is the kind of stuff I normally throw away, into the bin. But on a project like this, every little bit counts, because every little bit you will find a use for until you're at the very end and you've detailed it and you go, okay, now we're done. And in this case, it was all those strange little off-cut bits of plastic from when I was sawing the main components of the mouse into quarters. Okay, so making some modifications to the base plates so that they connect together. This, this is a tricky one because you will find that some of the bits you need to cut up don't just line up nicely and won't play ball. So it's all about finding the right angle to make your cuts at. I mean, I'm using a variety of different little hand saws to get this done. But if you feel more comfortable just using like a craft knife, by all means. Okay, so I used some excess bits of plastic to create side panels. And that was pretty much the final step before I could start filling in gaps. Now this is something that Brian likes to do with his scratch bash vehicles. He likes to cover the whole thing near enough in a layer of filler and then sand that back. I'm I'm a bit less traditional when it comes to filler. I like to just fill the areas that I feel need filling and then leave the plastic as it is. Um, I can understand like the, the method he uses. Um, it's to, I believe, to ensure that all the surfaces are 
like ready for painting that there's no irreg irregularities but I'm I don't tend to do this on on my builds most of the time so I just splat it on where I think it's needed and then sand it down one of the things with this project is there is a lot of drying time like in this case I'm using a, a like a an adhesive a wood adhesive or like a instant hold corking stuff and like it takes like a solid 24 hours for that to harden up before I can start sanding it and even then I'm sanding it with a hand file so yeah I've cut out a lot of the applying sanding applying sanding like we, ju we skip past that and get straight to the good stuff. Okay, so here we are, skipping past the sanding stage. Now getting into the detail stage. And the, the bottom of the vehicle is flat enough now that I can put it on a table and it's not like rocking or wobbling or anything like that. So that's, that's a good sign. But you can see areas where I've had to just completely fill it with filler and then sand it back a little bit just to make sure that it works. Okay, here I'm using those clicky parts of the mouse to simulate the wings or covers or little protective panels that are going to be lifted up. And again, because there's no guide to doing this, you have to kind of just figure out what looks right for you. But there were some things that I knew I wanted to do. I wanted to take these little supports and glue these in the back and make them look like some kind of exhausts. Because I like the idea that if these winged panels were lifted up, you could see like the inner workings and mechanisms of the vehicle underneath. So there'll be lots of little details added in the back, whereas the front and the sides will be mostly just bare panels. Okay, so here I am just sorting through all the little scrappy bits of plastic and, and interesting components that I have left. I'm still trying to go for symmetry, but at the same time I'm also trying to help fill little gaps in the design. So here I'm using a part to make it look like there's some kind of seat or something in the driver's compartment. Whereas here I found these little tabs, if I cut those off the, the component I could make them almost look like grab handles. I use some other little details to help fill the very last gaps at the bottom of the mouse. And yeah, I mean, it's at this point, it's all just, you know, you've done the hard bit. You've done the, the stressful, like, oh, I've got to make sure the body's solid and sanded. And da -da -da -da. Now it's the fun bit. You can glue whatever you want on there and, you know, make it look symmetrical or asymmetric. You know, just have fun. Add little details. Go crazy. So let's get into the painting. So... I started with black poster paint, um, a few layers of that just because it soaks into the filler or the, the glue. Um, that's just because of how porous the material is. I didn't feel the need to like mix it with PVA or anything. I mean, I, I could have done, but I felt fine just painting it, you know, just poster paint black. Okay, so adding a foundation layer, I'm going to be using Craft Store Brown Paint. However, as you may know, I am running out of all of my materials. So in this case, I am opening up my brown paint to get the last dregs out of the container. And it works pretty good. You know, I'm not going to lie, like this, this worked better than I intended. There was actually a lot of brown paint in there. So just as we admire how nice that looks with a layer of brown paint, I just want to say to you guys, if you're about to throw out one of your old craft store bottles or tubes because you think you can't get any more out of it, like get an empty container, cut that sucker open and get the last remnants of paint out of it because you will be surprised at how much can be left in these things when we go to throw it away. Like I could, you know, maybe my bigger projects I can't use this stuff on, but that's still more paint than none at all. So yeah so going into painting this thing then the big decision is what color do i do the body i mean in my mind i could see it in like a, a flashy red like this is some sort of luxury car but at the same time i could see it in a yellow like this is some sort of work skimmer vehicle in the end how do you resolve that kind of issue just paint it both so i'm gonna do one side red and one side yellow <laughs> 
And uh, you guys have seen me paint a hundred times. You don't need to watch me paint a vehicle from start to finish. So you, you know the normal steps. I'm going to dry brush it. I'm going to add silver and washes and yada, yada, yada. Um, but you can see the key components and how they all line up nicely. One of the details I really wanted to add to this was some sort of racing stripes or futuristic pattern. So using the good old fashioned masking tape trick, I'm going to mask off some interesting kind of lines, which I'll then paint over. And, you know, it's just just small little extra bits that help break up the large flat colors and help tie some of the components together like it's a unified planned thing rather than you know there you go <laughs> vehicle done <laughs> okay so once i painted those stripes in black i dry brushed them a bit with with some gray mixed from the last of my white and black and it's important to do this while the tape's still on because then it, when it comes to peeling off it looks so good which is what we have here. A lovely montage of all the tape being taken off. It really is a rewarding part, like to see it all come together and for all the little tricks to work. So you know what? After a few more details painted in black to make it look like maybe it got hit by a mine or something, I think it's about time we wrap this up. So, here it is, my one item scratch bashing challenge. And we went from a computer mouse to a land speeder suitable for sci-fi wargaming like Judge Dredd or maybe not 40k, but like the more cartoonier editions like Rogue Trader. But I definitely had Judge Dredd in mind when I was making this, because it definitely has that like 90s loony sort of feel to it. So, what can I say? This this video took uh, quite a while to put together, um, and it's certainly longer than my average video. So if you've stuck around all the way to the end, thank you very much. A massive thank you to Brian over at the Scratch Bashing channel. I absolutely love your videos, man. They remind me of where I came from in this hobby. So keep putting those videos out. And uh, everyone stay tuned because there will be more challenges like this. I hope you've all enjoyed the change of pace today. And I hope this video goes to show that you can turn pretty much anything into anything with enough sort of hard work and determination and all that good fun stuff. As always, you know, keep keep fighting the good fight. You know, I know coronavirus is getting everyone down, but we're we're getting through it. And of course, if you check out the Gaslands UK Facebook page, you will notice that April's competition is up. And this month's sponsor is Dashlands, and they want you to build a weird and wonderful contraption. So, we've all seen your usual wasteland cars with machine guns and spikes and the usual, but what they want to see is something completely out there. Something with a different means of propulsion or locomotion instead of just gas and wheels. So, if you've ever wanted to build something that flies or skims or gets along on tracks, this is the time to do it. As always, our favourites are there. Tony Peacock from January, he's in. Rob Lawrence with a Burger King van. <laughs> and of course, Charlie Crump with an absolutely Titanic-sized vehicle, which I can't wait to see what he does with. That looks like a city on wheels. I love it, and I can't wait to see that finished. Don't let me down, Charlie. You can do this. There's still time. In fact, by the time this video comes out, there are still two weeks left to get your entries in. So head on over to the Gasland UK Facebook page and enter Car of the Month for April. There's prizes for first, second and third place. So head on over and check it out. As always, head on over to the V2A Emergency Podcast, which broadcasts every Wednesday and Saturday at 9pm UK time. They continue to get amazing guest stars on the show, from 
prop and costume experts to comic book artists and members of Mad Max legend. But it's, you need to do stuff like that or else you go a bit crazy, you know? It's, <laughs> is, is, there any, you know? is there anything you don't like? painting you know like uh, sometimes some artists don't like you know have trouble with hands or... no i kind of i find you know what the, the secret is i find all of it equally as hard to draw oh, okay. so therefore <laughs> it doesn't matter you know what i mean it's like and i and i speak to i mean i speak to my wife helena i say to her you know i think this is going to be an easy cover and she just laughs and goes, none of them are easy. None of them are easy. <laughs> it's like somebody that's been in Vietnam or something, you know. It's like uh, she just looks at me with, like, eyes staring off into the distance, you know, yeah, like the, thousand yards there. Yeah. That's it. That type of thing, cause... If you've got sort of three hints or, or three three good pointers for people, uh, somebody just trying to build their own brand new post-apocalyptic outfit, what kind of three <laughs> pointers, very easy things, would you sort of to point them in the right direction, some do's and don'ts. Right, okay, as a starting point, this is not necessarily just for costumes, but for building things, is get good at spotting shapes in other things and how shapes will work together, how things fit. That's the whole sort of repurposing, salvaging, skip diving mentality is looking for shapes so that's something which she is kind of a really good skill to cultivate is just looking at a shape going oh, how, how, how can i use that and maybe in conjunction with another shape to make something completely different so shapes for me are very important anyway this video has gone on far too long thank you all for watching wasteland and i will see you all in the next episode bye bye In fact, I would like to take a moment to issue a friendly challenge to other hobbyists out there. What do you think you can come up with using only components from a single item? What sort of model or terrain would you make? If you would like to try your hand at this, please share it with us. Post a video here on YouTube and call it Scratch Bashing Single Item Challenge. If you would like to try, I'm excited to see what you can come up with.